Hey guys, welcome to the very first episode of the SBF podcast talk. I have no idea what I'm going to name this yet, um, but obviously the first episode is just going to be an introduction. So basically who I am, what I do, how long I've been doing it for, my previous history in regards to my own weight loss, and sort of what got me into the fitness industry and to the point where I now help people lose weight for a living. Um, so we can pretty much take it all the way back to a st the very, very beginning, the start. So if obviously you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you found this content helpful, make sure you definitely share it with other friends and families. The, the whole idea of this podcast is to purely give you as much help as I can possibly give. So obviously this first episode is going to be more about a bit of my history and just sort of telling you exactly how I started and, and how I lost 50 kilos because I was once basically morbidly obese when I was younger. And hopefully you can sort of take away some nuggets from that. And then in the later episodes, we'll actually go into more specifically the how to's. So things like how does your body actually lose weight? How are habits implemented and things like that. So um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shannon from Shannon Billows Fitness. I've been a personal trainer and or weight loss coach for probably just on 12 to 13 years now. Um, I think about since 2010-ish is when I first got qualified. Uh, I am by no means an active, healthy, fit person at heart. I hate exercise. <laughs> I don't enjoy sports. Uh, I am one of the laziest people that you'll ever meet in terms of physical activity. Now, having said that, all of my approaches to everything, even just including life in general, is to take the path of least resistance. And that's usually how all of my programs are designed. So it's to get you the maximum amount of results with the least amount of effort and or intrusion into your current lifestyle as possible. So if that sounds good to you, then you'll most likely definitely like my style of coaching and my programs that I offer. But going back to sort of where I was, so I used to be 120 kilos and I lost 50 kilos from the age of about 15 years old all the way up to the age of about, I think 17, 18 years old. So I probably lost that maybe over the course of, uh, I would say about two-ish years from if I'm thinking back now, I haven't really thought about that for a long time. So about two years is when I lost the majority of the weight. Now, how did I get into the position that I was in? Obviously everyone has their own individual story, but I do believe that there's obviously a series of events that I personally believe that sort of led me to where I was. Uh, it was. It's never one specific thing, although, I mean, yes, it can be technically, but usually it's one event or a, a number of events that sort of spiral into a plethora of events and sort of eating occasions and lack of restriction and things like that. So if I was to go way, 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 way back um, to when I was really little, so when I was a small kid we used to live in Perth so I was born in Melbourne Australia and then we moved over to Perth for a few years um, and in Perth it was basically outdoor activity I was a really 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 skinny underweight kid I actually didn't eat much food uh, to the point where my parents would take me to the doctor and they were like our son doesn't eat <laughs> and the doctor said he's fine let him do his thing he'll eat when he wants to now Fast forward a few years, I think I was up to about age seven is when we moved back to Melbourne in Australia. And moving back to Melbourne, I didn't have any friends. I was living, we were living with my grandparents at the time for a while and I didn't really know anyone. So going from a place of high activity, being outdoors all the time, having friends to a place that was where I didn't know anyone. Usually if you go to your grandparents' house, they're usually just chock-a-block loaded in terms of things like uh, chocolates, ice cream, lollies, cakes, that sort of stuff, you know, the good stuff that you get at your grandparents' house. Um, and I think the combination of uh, lack of friends, the combination of my parents wanting me to eat more food because I was somewhat underweight when I was a little kid, and also the fact that I have easy access to a lot of high calorie foods at the place I we were living for a time. So um, whilst we're living there, from memory, this is such a long time ago, is probably maybe six months to maybe a year and a half or so, somewhere in that range. 
um, I started to gain weight. So going from someone who was underweight or just very skinny to the point where I was taken to the doctors and the doctor was like, let him just do his thing, he'll eat when he's hungry, to the point where I then started to gain weight in, I suppose, in my parents' eyes, it was one of those things, that this is a good thing, he's, he's gaining weight, we've been trying to get him to eat food for so long, let's just let him gain some weight. Um, the unfortunate thing is there was no stop, so there was no end point to say that, okay, you've gained enough weight, we need to sort of monitor how much extra food or junk that you're eating. Now, if you've been following my stuff for any amount of time, everyone should now know it is just purely calories in, calories out that determines your weight gain or weight loss. Um, now, due to my, I suppose, my parents' lack of education around nutrition, they didn't know, for, uh, to be honest, the far majority of people just didn't know that it was just the excess of calories that I was eating that was causing it. Um, now, growing up through, I suppose, end of primary school, going into high school, I wasn't a popular kid at all. So I was overweight. I was into gaming, um, anime, cartoons, Japanese manga, that type of stuff, uh, computers. And back then, it wasn't popular. <laughs> you were the hardcore nerds in the group if you were into that stuff. Now it's all pop culture. It's cool to be in that kind of group. Uh, but back then, being bullied for overweight, being bullied for being a nerd gamer, into anime, that sort of stuff, um, I suppose it makes you a withdrawn person. So uh, basically I didn't really have my friends. I wasn't part of the popular group. I had my circle of friends who were very similar to me. Um, and I just wasn't very active. I had no interest in sports. I'd rather just go home, play video games, do my own thing, eat food and just carry on with life. So needless to say, I hated my school life. It was probably one of the worst periods of my life ever. So I was so glad to once school finished to get out of the, that sort of box. Um, but it got to a point where, you know, kids can be nasty. I got into fights at school because of bullying. Um, and it got to a point where I had to start to learn self-defense. So I, I went to boxing for a couple of years throughout high school, probably about four years or so. Um, because I got into a big fight with uh, one of the kids there that was just name calling and things like that. And it got to the point where I suppose it was serious enough that my, my parents were always wanting to help me lose weight because they could see that I was clearly, yes, overweight. Um, but number two, it was affecting me and my mental health. So it was just at a point where they didn't know what to do. I had no idea what to do and there was no one really that we could speak to about it. So I, during that time from, you know, ages of like 12, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up until 15 is when I sort of, I suppose, found the secret to the weight loss game. Uh, we tried everything, just like everyone else, just like you listening right now have probably tried everything as well. So going through fad diets, going through soup diets, shake diets. Um, I still remember at one point there was a, um, a tomato soup base diet that was on the news at the time that's helped someone lose X amount of weight. And then my parents were like, well, we've tried everything else. Why don't you try this? And I remember eating the first bowl and like literally gagging, like to the point where I was almost vomiting. And I'm like, I can't, can't do that. But the breaking point for me was when I joined up to Weight Watchers. So those who don't know what Weight Watchers is, or it was more of a popular program many years ago, people still do it and it still has some success. Um, but with Weight Watchers, it was basically a, a very simplified calorie counting system. So with Weight Watchers, you basically have a certain amount of points that you can have within a day. So let's say an apple is two points. A piece of chicken is worth three points or four points and then by the end of the day you have an amount of say 20 points that you're allowed to have now basically don't go over your points on any given day and if you have points left over you can bank them for other days so if you want to go out on the weekend and have something special or a treat then you can have something special in the treat but once the week had finished any points that you had accrued that were left over they're basically deleted and then you have to start the next week fresh as of monday now the, the hard part about this, and me first joining Weight Watchers, it was, a, I think, just like a magazine, you know, like the Who magazines that people used to read. I don't think anyone reads them anymore. 
but they there was a, an advertisement for Weight Watchers. So basically join Weight Watchers and get X amount off your first month. Now this is a, an interesting story, so I do hope you'll listen to this part. Now, a lot of people think that they have, um, I suppose, not self-esteem issues, but they find it hard to join a gym and start improving their own health. Let me just put you into my shoes for a little bit. So when I was a, I was a 15 year old boy and severely overweight at 120 kilos. Now, Weight Watchers back then was for middle-aged to older women in their sort of, you know, 40s, 50s, and it was a group conference that you had to physically go to every single week. So every Wednesday, I think from memory, is where I used to have to go to, it was like a local hall, and it was just all women, no men, no one my age, and the process of going to the Weight Watchers was you would walk in, um, you would collect your your bag for the day. I think they had some samples for the day. And then thereafter, you would actually go to like one of those old school weighing machines where they flick it on the side. It's sort of like the huge scale that's in front of you and they sort of have to knock it over um, the little tiny weights to see sort of how much you weigh. And that's how you'd weigh in, in front of all 30, 40, 50 other people in the group. So mind you, me being the only 15 year old guy in the group, everyone else being women, uh, no one was nearly as overweight as I was too, by the way. And you had to weigh in front your, yourself in front of everyone. Anyway, that was an experience. Um, so at this point, I was, I was def- desperate. I would literally do anything anyone told me to get the weight off. So um, I got the books. They basically said, here is your points you're allowed per day based on your body mass and like your height, age, weight, and sex. And here's your points. Don't go over your points. Here's your little booklet track your basically your points and we'll see you next week and you would check in i think it's every week or two weeks so i basically did that i did no extra activity except for just extra walking every day so for about an hour and from that for the first month i lost about probably close to two kilos per month now i sort of had a really good understanding of if i just eat less points, I will lose weight faster. That's pretty much what it come down to. Now, this was the the turning point for me in terms of me doing this completely by myself now. So I remember that one of the last sessions I ever went to with the Weight Watchers Wayne's, there was a woman that, so people who were doing the Wayne's were just helpers, so just volunteers. And the person who was weighing me in had noticed from my last weighing, because you had to write it down on a piece of paper, my weight had gone up slightly i think maybe a kilo or so from my previous weighing mind you i was already down seven or eight kilos by this point um, and this is about the sixth week or so and the person who was weighing me in had noticed that my weight had gone up from my last weigh in from the previous week and basically just blasted me in front of everyone and just said you're not working hard enough this isn't good enough you need to do better and at that point I literally knew that that was the end for me in terms of going back to Weight Watchers. So that person blew it. (laughs) So I didn't need to be spoken to like that because I knew exactly I was sticking to the points. I was eating the exact same foods. For whatever reason, my weight had just fluctuated slightly higher for that one day weigh-in. And I remember leaving the place at the time. And when I was walking out, I called up my mum at the time because I used to call her up and I used to walk to and from the meetups because it was just extra activity. I just walked down there. Um, it was an extra 15, 20 minute walk and I'd walk back of a night time. This is maybe six o'clock at night and it was, wasn't far from my house. So I'd call her up, told her what happened and said, I'm never going back. And she's, my mum just basically repeated to me at the time. She was like, okay, well, you know what to do. You know how to do it now. You've got the points, you're doing really well. Just keep doing what you're doing. Um, and that's what I continued to do. So pretty much for the next two years, I I probably stopped counting the points per se, but I started to get a really good idea of the types of foods that I should be eating. So I, I soon sort of started learning that I can get more bang for my buck eating more veggies, meats, and whole foods than I can chocolates, lollies, ice creams, and things like that. Um, now, obviously being um, a teenager, I didn't have any, any issues regarding alcohol and things like that because I didn't drink alcohol back then, so that wasn't even on the cards. But in regards to just physically losing weight, I basically just proceeded to, for the next two years, I would lose maybe 10 to 15 kilos at a time. I would then stop, have a break, 
go slightly backwards, might gain maybe three or four kilos back. And then I would realize to myself, no, I'm, I'm not exactly where I wanted to be. I would then continue again to lose another 10, 15 kilos, drop it down. And then I might gain back eight kilos. And then that would go backwards and forwards for probably the next two years until I got down to, uh, I think it was about 80-ish kilos was sort of my, not my highlight. I mean, I've, I've been much lighter than that, but from 120 kilos down to about, about 80 kilos is sort of where I usually would sit pretty comfortably. Um, and then I proceeded to stay there for pretty much most of my teenage years, all the way up until I was about maybe 17, 18-ish. Now, um, my old ex-girlfriend at the time that we broke up probably just after high school finished, and what basically happened or ensued after that was me just wanting to focus purely on me and I didn't have the restrictions of um, a partner at the time or there was no more girlfriend in the picture at the time. So it was literally me, myself and I, and I at that moment, probably within a couple of weeks or months of me or us parting our ways, decided that I will get abs at least once in my life. I, I am so dedicated to getting lean. I've been lean before. And that is basically what got me to the point where I had visible abs. I got lean enough from 120 kilos all the way down to, I think my lightest I reached was about 69 kilos. Now I didn't hit it the first try that I did. So I continued to try multiple times. Um, but with each time you learn more things. So I learned that I needed to start increasing um, activity. Got to a point where I couldn't walk anymore. So I was just doing so much walking that it just became almost silly at that point. So I had to find another faster, effective way to get in activity. So that became body weight training. So my body weight training at home, I had a small gym, dumbbells, bench press, which is you know almost every teenager starts off with. And that's where I started in terms of my, my building muscle journey. Now, back then, again, I had, starting from zero, didn't have any prior knowledge. No one was teaching me how to do all of this. I was teaching myself um, via basically blogs and, and internet searches and things like that. One of the very first programs that I ever did that sort of got me very lean was a, um, it was a 16 weeks abs challenge program. And I'm not too sure if you guys would know who I'm talking about, but if, you, if you're thinking of Tyler Durden from Fight Club, so basically Brad Pitt, on his abs lean shirt, shirtless picture where he's side on. That was the picture I had in my mind at the time that I wanted to look like. And I was going to make it happen and I didn't care how hard it, how hard it was or how long it took. Uh, and I achieved it and I did get there eventually. Um, but the amount of things that I know now compared to what I've been through in the past is 10 times there, you, you can basically get there 10 times easier than what I had to go through myself. So I'm when it comes to things like picking a personal trainer or if you're looking at getting hiring a coach and you look at all these people in the gym and they've got big muscles and they're always really lean, just understand that I suffered just as much as every other overweight person has suffered, probably even a bit more just because I was the nerd at the school uh, compared to the people who were popular and overweight and didn't have that issue so much. Um, I eventually got to my goal and it was just consistent hard work and just making slow improvements on where I was the previous day and or previous week. Now, the only time that you fail is when you completely give up and you say, this is not for me. So where does that take us to now? Basically, after the last 12 to 15 years of me learning about this, so I I became a qualified coach. I used to work at a call center for about five years. Um, and my wife now, uh, at the time, she was like, you can't keep working at a call center forever. What do you want to do with your life? So I ended up looking, she, was just, she basically said to me, like, you know, you're into fitness. You've been training yourself for a while. I helped my brother at that time lose a fair bit of weight. He lost about 20 kilos. And again, this is very just basic nutrition and training help. Um, and she just basically said to me, why don't you help, why don't you become a personal trainer? Why don't you look into getting um, certified and then just be a PT? And I was like, I'll, I'll think about it. And another five, six months passed. And then I basically said, all right, I need to get out of the call center. I need to do something with my life. So that's when I basically became a PT and I got qualified. I did a part-time over the course of about a year. 
But with a personal trainer certification, the certification literally just gets you in the doors. It is many hours of ongoing practice and ongoing education, paid education that I pay for for myself, as well as um, just experience firsthand dealing with people. Now, I do have, I suppose, the blessing that I did sales for about five years. So I do have the, the conversational skills that I can speak to all different types of people. So when I was like you know, early 20s, I would be selling people to um, elderly bone insurance who in their 70s and I'd be speaking to people in their 30s with kids who want Foxtel. So that's the type of sales that I did. So going into the personal training industry, I had a background in sales, which I suppose put me forward in regards to most other people. The, the turnover rate, just an interesting fact now, as we currently are, this is the, the 7th of the 11th, 22. The turnover rate for most PTs is about six to nine months in the industry. So if you went and got qualified and you applied for a position, you'd probably, 90% of the people are out of the industry within about six to nine months. Now that we have the online coaching option, it's probably a little bit less than that, but um, sorry, a bit more than that in terms of your actual sticking around. But back then, if you got paid based on who you trained. Um, now, luckily for me, I also picked a place inside the city. So there was heavy foot traffic. Uh, and there was a really high turnover in terms of, of um, members coming through the gym. So we just spoke to all different types of people, different walks of life. So over the last basically 12 years, my education has gotten better and better and better. At the very start of any trainer, you still figure out who you like to train, what you like to do, the style of training and things like that. Now, my style of training has evolved. My idea and my perceptions in terms of what people should be doing in regards to energy, training styles, that sort of stuff has, I suppose, even though my education has gotten larger, it's become more simplified. My programming has become easier. My nutrition has become easier. And now I just take, no, I wouldn't even say a minimalist approach, but my approach to training and nutrition now is, again, like I said earlier, do the bare minimum possible that gets you 80 to 90 percent of your results and i'm obviously going to cover that in a lot more detail in future episodes or podcasts whatever you like to call it so uh that's pretty much a quick summary of my history in terms of where i was basically what my school life was like how i became overweight what i tried what worked for me at the time um, and then eventually got to the point where I just said to myself, there has to be an easier, more efficient way to help people to lose weight. Um, and that's basically what led me down the path of more evidence-based coaching, following the science and the evidence, um, or at least the majority of that point you in the right direction. Um, and that's basically sort of where it's led me to today. So moving forward after this episode, what we're pretty much going to cover off is things that you essentially need. So things like basic weight training, making sure your calories are set, are you getting the right amount of protein, all the basics that you need to set up for a good program. Now, obviously, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me directly, Instagram, TikTok, email. If you just Google or search any of those under Shannon Billows Fitness, I'm going to pop up. I haven't even named this podcast yet, so if you have some interesting names, definitely let me know. Um, and that will tie up the first introduction origin story of the SBF podcast for now. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for listening and I will see you in the next episode.